the candidates for the party are already decided. So the advice is for you to get involved in party politics, to be members of political parties. Uh, uh, one thing that struck me uh, during the Iceland Nigeria match, you know, a lot of narratives were that the goalkeeper is a dentist, the coach is. So it does not stop you that you're a member of a political party does not mean you don't have a profession. Most of us that found ourselves in politics, just like uh, His Excellency, these are professionals in various fields, practicing professionals. But the first thing is for you to get involved in party politics. So my advice to youth is get involved. Be part of it. Be part of rallies. Be part of group discussions. Even when you find yourself on the internet, on social media, let there be positive and constructive discussions, not just destructive criticism, but discussions that will lift us from where we are today to the next level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's come back to you, Aisha. It's interesting that oftentimes when we talk about young people, there seems to be a general umbrella. But oftentimes when we're talking about politics or we're talking about business, we find out now that there are certain challenges that women specifically face. It's still very tough for women who are not young, and I'm sure you can, uh, how much more young women, do you think that, or young girls, do you think that they particularly have a challenge uh, in terms of getting involved in politics? And if they do, what sort of challenge are you seeing? Uh, I think Mrs. Awoshika alluded to it when she made her remarks towards the end. She talked about the fact that if you as a society, you exclude young women, or women in general, and you exclude youth, then you will only be working at half capacity. And I think that's the same thing with um, the political scene. Um, not only patriarchy and culture, but there's all the other things that have been mentioned by the other speakers. The fact that, you know, we, we are not politically conscious generally as a society, and I'm including myself there. I'm sure if I asked how many people were card carrying members, okay, this, this is a different crowd because this crowd came to, these are friends of, of the celebrant, so they might be card carrying members. But in a typical setting, if you ask people how many people have cards, party cards, you find that five, six, very few people are actually in the party. So I think for me, even being raised socially to think that women belong in that space would be the first challenge. We're not even raised to think that space belongs to us or we should be in that space. So while I agree that we should be joining political parties, where does the political consciousness start from? That we should belong in politics, that we should lead, especially when culture and patriarchy keeps you out. But I'll where, keep where going back. It should, start from? Sorry, sorry. it should start from the home, you know, it should start from the schools. It should be in our curriculum. When we talk about citizens, when we talk about what the role of a citizen is or are, it shouldn't be restricted to men. Even if it's in a picture book, the picture shouldn't just be of little boys. It should be of little boys and girls. For me, those things slowly will change. But we can also use affirmative action, which many countries have used. Rwanda is leading the world in terms of the number of women in parliament. There are other African countries. ANC in South Africa have made it a party policy to have women. So there are other fast ways to bridge that gap if the people in the society believe that women have value to add. But again, I still think that the biggest obstacles to women's political participation is not exactly patriarchy and all those things. I think we can overcome them. I think it's still the way the parties are designed. Our parties are designed to be fundamentally undemocratic. No, they are fundamentally undemocratic and nobody can get through it, not men and not women except you are invited to it. So for me, yes, I agree that we should have our, thank you, <laughs> we should have our PVCs, but by the time we're voting on election day, 80% of the battle for decent leadership has already been lost because we're not in the parties and because we do not even choose within the parties. They are ch the people who are going to present themselves are chosen even for us. So for me, that's the beginning. I don't want special treatment. You know, I'm, I'm an advocate. I ask for affirmative action. We've had many back and forth. We have a GEO bill that, that's gender and equal opportunity bill that's been hanging in the National Assembly for months. We wouldn't be asking for special treatment if we had a level playing field. There is no level playing field. If you read my book, you'll find how hard it is to even join a party. I agree. Party members should have second address. In fact, the ideal politician should have a second address, meaning that you have something else to do. That politics is not where you come to eat. 
it is where you come to serve. But the truth is, no, but the truth is, as a busy, I lived in Lagos for 18 years. If I had wanted to join ACN or whatever party, I struggled to see how I'd have done that. Why? Because for the simple fact that joining a party is not easy. Even knowing where your word is, is a problem. No, it's true. Even knowing where your word is, is a problem. Why in the 21st century, we're talking about technology, can I not go to APC's website or PDP's website, click on it, see where all my word offices are, and then go there? Everything is made difficult. It's made difficult to keep people out. So for me, it's not about women having special. It is just that fundamentally, our politics is designed to be undemocratic and exclusive, to keep it small and to keep the majority out. And that's where women fall. That's a lot. I mean, you're packed in a lot in very little time in talking about your, the space is undemocratic, even within the parties. The difficulty for, I think, men and women to even join parties. I mean, starting at the word, oftentimes you'll be told, go to your word. I want to ask you, I mean, Nadibola, you're running for <laughs> the House of Assembly. How much of an obstacle, because one of the things that people have talked about, uh, yes, the ages have been reduced, but a, people, a lot of people say, it's a pipe dream. This is still going to be very difficult, considering how much money you need to run for the smallest office. How much of a problem do you think that funding will be for young people, I mean, even for someone like you? Thank you. Um, just before I answer that question, I just wanted to make a point uh, following Aisha's point. I think that she's made a very good point in terms of exclusion. Um, we are, we are the, the way the system is designed is designed to exclude people. And um, so you go around looking for how to join the party, you know, how to get involved. And uh, when we're even, I'm, I'm struggling to not look in a certain direction of this room. <laughs> um. <laughs> when, when you are going to congresses or a convention, even the... Even the people who will choose, so the delegates who will eventually choose the party candidates, even that process is so guarded. Um, I think we need to, and I'm a member of APC, by the way, but I think we need to get to a level where every party member can actually vote in the primaries and even in also in congresses and conventions. Because that way is easier for, and is a more democratic way to run the party. Um, sorry, now I'll face my question. I just had to. <laughs> it's a good thing you're doing that because I was, when I asked you how easy it was, I mean, why you thought you were going to be successful, you talked about your education abroad. I don't, I don't know. But you, <laughs> you did not talk about the nitty gritty, and money is one of them. So let's quickly attack that one. Thank you. Um, I'm quite young. Um, even though I'm a professional, we know what uh, salaries in this country are like. Um, I would definitely say that funding is a big, big, big challenge for anybody in politics, not to talk of a young person. Um, and that also takes me back to the, the, the structure of the party and all of that, but I'll, I'll leave that away for now. Um, it's, it's incredibly difficult. Um, I do have some worries that we may end up with the, the Yahoo boys of this world being the biggest beneficiaries of Not Too Young to Run. Um, it is a very, very sincere worry for me. And therefore, one of the reasons why I'm running for office is to encourage other young people from my type of background, with my kind of educational background, to know that it is indeed possible. Whether we make it or not is a different story, but let's come out and let's try. Um, maybe only a tenth of what I have managed to spend so far has actually come from my own savings or my own pocket. I have uh, received the support of many generous people, parents, of course, uncles and aunties and all of that. Um, but I think we all must just make the effort. Um, because if we don't, we don't know whether it is possible or not. Um, and I hope that by God's grace, if and when I get there, I can be a good example for others. Well, I wish you all the best in that regard. I'm going to ask, 
I mean, considering how difficult.